Hey there, buddy. It's Wayne D. Welcome to the website. It's WayneD.com. And today I want to keep talking about hip depth and the phrase that I coined a long time ago called being in the box. So there are many boxes when I draw lines on swings, but from down the line, the box that I'm talking about is the hip box. So I'll draw a line on the back of the butt and the front of the knees and then I'll see how the swing functions from there. And another important item is the head to see what happens as far as up and down and forward and back movement. Now this is the swing that really turned me on to this idea. I used to have a I used to have a television that I would draw before all the software came out in computers. So you know that goes way back. So I used to just take a dry erase marker and I would actually draw all the way around the torso and watch what happened during the swing. And what I saw with this great stable down the line view of Hogan is this. I saw that right hip move way back while maintaining knee flex. So I was very interested and I was like what? I knew I didn't do that in my swing and at the same time I noticed that his head stayed right out on the line and it dropped. So I don't think I have ever heard anyone accuse Hogan of dipping that word that has a negative connotation. And I was like, if you bend from the waist and you keep your head out, you're bound to lower, which is exactly what happens here. So that's adding flexion to the right hip. And then in transition, which is going to start at the right side of the pelvis and on the ground with rotation that turns in the opposite direction to start the downswing, Hogan's going to stay deeper than he started. And look at the room that provides for his right arm. It's pretty great. And then in the finish, he stays right in the box. Now you'll see some players that don't, depending on how much right side bend they want to continue to have. As players get older, they'll tend to stand up at the end and come out of the box, but not when they're hitting the ball. So we'll see different swings of that nature. So let's go through a few re recent players and older players. Let's try uh, Lee Trevino. Let's take, take a look at his swing. So this is obviously at St. Andrews. Now Trevino, when he took it back, he would keep his cheek up against the line, but he lifted a little bit to, when he took it back. You can, and straighten his leg a bit. Now watch the, the magic move here is the what I would call the crunch or the dig in here. And then look how he opens up and stays deep. Now is that easy on the spine? Of course not. Golf is not easy on the spine. Golf is brutal when it comes to you know, the health of your lower back and that's why a lot of people have problems with it. Here's another great player. There's John Rahm. Let's take a look. You can recognize the swing from the Ryder Cup on the first tee in France. So let's take a look at Rahm, see how he functions. So I really like the I really like the right cheek to to 
go behind the box line in the backswing and then in transition if you see even a little bit of that left cheek over here that's really good so look how cool that is But uh, back to an older swing. Let's take a look at Peter Thompson here. So again, in order to do this, you need a stable camera. It doesn't have to be exactly the right height, but if the camera's stable and if the camera is somewhat behind the hands, we're going to get a pretty good view. So there we go. In the back swing, you see the added depth. And you also see the, the whole right leg. So the front of the right leg is here. Watch it go back. So it moves back, retains flex. And there it is. There's that left hip nice and deep. Look at all the room. Five-time British Open champ. And there's the out-of-the-box finish, which is probably healthier for your back. I think if you look at Tiger now, he's going to do that as opposed to when he was younger, when he would stay side bent all the way through. So here's another good one. It's Justin Rose. So same spot as Rom. Camera's a little more, he, he teed it up a little more over to the left. Well, let's take a look. We'll still get a good view of this. There's the right cheek. Again, Rose's head backs up just a hair. So that's another element that you'll see some guys will back their upper body back while the hips stay nice and deep. So you can see that that's an option in getting deep. It's not my favorite thing. I'd rather see the head stay out over the ball. But look how deep that is through impact. So when I'm trying to teach this, try to get everybody in a posture that's weighted towards the front of the feet at a dress in an athletic posture, and then in the backswing. If we keep the head out, I always emphasize that along with moving pressure from the ball of the right foot to the heel, staying on the inside of the foot and keeping the knee flexed, and then explaining that what we're doing is adding flexion to the right hip. And there you go. So let's look at another. Another one you might not think would be one of the guys that would be deep. You've probably heard tell that Nicholas would have a tendency to early extend, but this is Nicholas in 63, I think, in a match against Snead at Pebble. Let's take a look at this one. There you can see there's the depth in the right cheek again. Well, Nicholas did not stay quite as deep, but that left cheek is right on the line, right here. Now this camera moves after he hits the ball, so can't really tell what's going on here, but Nicholas could really drive that right leg back, and then when he came through, Kept it back far enough. And just a tiny bit of pullback there. Now here's one of my favorite all-time swings. This is Anthony Kim. It's really too bad that he stopped playing. go again. So if you're looking to, to try to get this happening, you can see that 
by the time you get to P2, you want to have your butt behind that line, which means you are pushing back probably down into the ground and back toward that heel right away in the backswing and then really trying to watch that you maintain that flex if not add pitch to your pelvis and you can see Kim is deeper than he started there too and once again the whole idea is to create space for the arms get that right arm all the way in front here's another one let's go Mo Norman so you can see Mo had a definitely an oddball set up straight knees extended arms something that uh, I'm sure Bryson has looked at a million times so you can see Mo would lift back out of it a little bit and then crunch back into it and then the key is look where the left hip is at impact. It's nice and deep. And then he'll pop out of that box after he hits the ball. It's kind of hard to stay when you stand that far from it. It's kind of hard to stay bent over and be balanced. Let's do a couple more. Here's a nice picture of Ernie Els. I think this is at Doral a while back. And again, you'll see right away, there's the move right into the right into the right cheek back. And there's maintaining that enough so that, so with that added depth, you've got room for the right knee to go back forward again as it rotates. But if you can keep that right knee inside the line, which is why I like to use that drill with the the stick in the ground and between the feet then that helps so here's a here's an example so there's the there's the shaft so it's right in between the feet there and it just has to be below the end of the grip and then the whole idea is to drive the right leg inside of it so I like to think of driving the hips over here on a on a 45 degree angle if we if you can or at least have that thought and that's kind of what happens when you make an athletic sidearm throwing motion this is Dick Mast another tour player alright so there you go more evidence and I got a ton more swings of guys keeping their hips in the box or even deeper than the box and uh, just wanted to emphasize that this I think that's such a super important thing to have going on in your golf swing